what's happening. It's Mike the Fixer. That's me. And this is the first video of the 1990 Jeep Wagoneer with uh, power window motor. That's the lock. That's the motor. Uh, as you can see, let's get the glass stopped. Oh. Oh, that's weak. Weak. You're a weak little motor. That's it right there. I'm really not surprised it's bad. But, uh, all these motors of this generation car were they were chunk out of the factory. A simple tap test and they would start again. But I'm gonna hit the uh, slides with some uh, silicone spray first. We're gonna check some uh, voltage. We're gonna check some resistance. That's every service manual's favorite test. Check the resistance. And nine times out of ten, it's fine. But it's failing. Um, but yeah, let's go from there. So, got my fluke meter. I got my new leads. These are the ones I got on uh, Amazon. They're nice quality. I'll put a link. Um, yeah, so far so good. I haven't really used them, but these are detachable. There's, it came with a bunch of clips. They're a little longer. I don't know if that's going to be a positive thing or a negative for me, but um, I will do that. So this is, I'm going to check our resistance. If we can get a good connection. I don't know if this is a good measurement or not. I gotta look it up. Uh, 1.4 ohms, right around there. Just gonna connect this. Uh, I'm gonna want to get a back probe. Let's see what the voltage is while this is running. Uh, I don't want to cut the wires, but I might be able to get a probe in behind this connector. Looks like somebody did probe the connector already. The wire actually has got a pinhole in it, which is not good for a door. That's moisture, that's resistance, but let's see if I can get a small probe in there. All right, these are nice and long and sharp, so I was able to back probe in there. <clears throat> and... Six volts. We're getting low voltage out here. Let's go right to the connector. Disconnect, go to the connector. Operate the switch. 10.9 volts. 10.7. Okay. Let's see what my battery voltage actually is in this vehicle. This is the ground. That's what I don't like. Look at this giant honking connector and this is the little alligator clip they give you this kit it's a little dainty it does go pretty big I guess but I don't know I prefer a bigger one we'll see see how they do price is right uh, as you can hear I haven't started it and got nice 14 volts it's more like it running. Actually, uh, back, back down around 10. Bleh. Disconnected, I have 14 volts. 
there's something inside the motor. That's what goes on. I'd love to take this one apart. Let's see if I can do that. Ooh, that slides nice though now, huh? Rear door, left rear door is uh, needs just the, the motor is the only thing I can find. Nobody has the regulators, and apparently the motor is the same. Right front, left front. I'm sorry, right front, right rear, the same motor. The left front, the left rear motor, the same. So, and if you have to do this job, you've got rivets for everything, so you're gonna have to drill out rivets. It's not a big deal. Drill off the heads, and they pop right off. Uh, so I'm gonna have to look into ordering a motor regulator first, and then we'll start tearing in the things. Let me back this up for you. Simple. So you wanna take your ground, put that to something solid. I'm gonna do the door striker. It's a nice bare metal. This is to the power window switch. So. We did a resistance test of the motor itself. That was the 1.4 ohms. This one will do voltage. Switch in one direction will have power. In this case, 11.3, 12.6 is obviously what we're looking for. So one direction you're going to have power. Let's say that's down position. So we check the other probe. And the other terminal, for the up position, it's the same thing. We have voltage, so we know we have power going to our motor. This would help you diagnose: uh, was it the motor or is it the switch? Uh, if you had no values there, then you want to go up to your switch and check the terminals at your switch, which are. Let's go mobile. Here's our switch. He's got it disconnected. No, but yeah, we've got the back of the terminals. One of them's going to be power, probably this red coming in. Um, that's the door locks. It's going to be these bottom ones. This look the window motor. A lot of times you can feel it in the switch if it's bad too. It's going to be, you're not going to feel any detent. And if this is a General Motors car, I would say. You want to check your wires here. Take off this accordion. All the early GM cars, we're going back even further, 70s, 80s. They would always break in there. Uh, and people would try and repair them right there. You cannot repair wires in a hinge area. They will never work. They'll just keep ripping. So you have to properly do it. you got to take off, run your two, three feet of wire and repair it under here make your connection, run it through. That's the right way. All right, so back on the left side. This one I actually, I got it stuck down. I forced it down so I could get some silicone in there. Maybe we could just see the, uh, yeah, focus on that. It's all dry rotted, I mean, this is not even felt in there anymore, honestly. Well, that's not going to help it slide, obviously. So that probably wore, didn't help the motor last. Yeah, so I got to get this panel off. 
Phillips here. We already did the one there. And then it's gonna be a door panel tool. Get the uh, clips. And we'll do a test on this motor. All right, door panel's off. Here's some advice on these old switches. I'm not gonna touch that tab or that tab. Because the other side's broken. <laughs> That's that old plastic. That stuff does not flex. So I'm just going to put this back here for testing. And uh, let me get the tripod again. It's just stupid people. Anyway, there's a motor on this one. Oh, uh, look at just that simple tap that I literally just did made it work again. Get hot. They're very, very small motors. It doesn't sound good. It doesn't feel good. They're died again. Watch. Yeah, there it goes. So there's probably moisture inside of it too. I noticed the uh, swear the drivers. The drivers may have had a drain tube on the actual motor. I was mistaken. I was like, the motor has a drain tube for moisture. I should tell you something. It's not very good design. Yeah, this is going to get stuck at the bottom. This is in rough shape. But looking at the design of it, it looks, I'm going to get some part numbers off of it, hopefully. Looks the same as the front, so I'm sure it is. And I can get a part. Oh, it's CIM. Okay. I think when I was looking online, I did see that. It was a company. Uh, I think it's a core charge, too, so I can't even take this one apart to uh, give you a full eye exam on it. All right, we'll see what we can do. I'm going to look for some parts. Hopefully, the next thing we'll be doing is motor here probably motor and regulator in the front okay. all right I was able to source two different regulators for this um, Dorman which didn't have the best reviews for noisy motors etc and another one is ACI um, I feel like I read ACI was like a maybe one they used Either way, I'm going to take this one off because I know I can get this one. These two, these two are for the track. I thought these were for something, but no, they're just a brace for the door, so don't bother with those. And it's going to be these three that hold the actual regulator and the motor. So I'm going to start with a quarter inch drill bit. Get cocky, go right to the big one. We'll see what happens. Quarter inch it is. They're aluminum, so they're, uh, they come out real easy. Now it's spinning, put a little pressure on it, and drill battery is dying. You guys are supposed to stop me. I forgot to detach it from the glass first. Not a big deal, I'll say look at the window down. There's a nut here. We'll take the regulator off the glass. And we're gonna get the glass up. And back in the day, you'd stick a cassette tape right here to hold the glass up. But those days are over. I'll stick a, an old iPod. No, I won't. Now it's just a matter of rotating it out of here. I don't think I'm gonna have to remove these. Get it out, but we'll see. Here. This is the thing I thought was a drain tube for the motor. It's actually the 
how it works. Well, maybe it isn't. That is a drain. Or is that where the screw? The screw guide? How does that work? I think it screws and it pushes this up and down. Driven by the gear. I guess that's a drain for this. It just drains into the door, which is sealed. Uh, this may have been a replacement with some uh, rivets. These are my rivets, but I did notice there were some in there already. Uh, but these motors. This is that CIM again. See if that's a factory or not. Uh, and it looks like some of the replacement motors just come with the wires here. So you may have to keep it original, splice this back on there. I just think this is what I would do. Uh, what else? Yeah, I did a little silicone and just. Well, they just get dirt, grease. I mean, look at this thing. It's been in there since 1990. Maybe. That's that. This probably was on the motor for noise. That's why people complain about the motors being noisy sometimes, because they either don't put this on or it fell off. Oh, here's the nut that I dropped. So yeah, that's that. Uh, If I do get a regulator for the left side, like I said, I can't find just a regulator for the back doors. Maybe I can get the front one to the left and just take the rivets, rivets out for the uh, motor and just use the motor. Then I'll have an extra left regulator for somebody. Uh, but it's not much wearable item on this. You know, it's not. It's all metal, which is good. We'll see how the new ones come if it's got plastic parts for bushings and whatnot. Alright, that's that. It's electric. Fuck batteries. This is like child's play. That's how it's done. So this is the back door. I got that one out. This one's got some interesting uh, original characteristics. There's a piece of foam at the bend here. If you look close at this, this is like a felt in here. So this, the other one where it just looked like it was dirty. Looks like they use a felt, probably to keep it quiet when it goes through the motor. This one actually has a tag on it. It looks like it says, it said Rockwell International, maybe? I don't see any part numbers. CIM is the company. And this right here is telling me, there's some glue right here, but more so on this side right here. This glue tells me there was some foam padding here. And that is part of my pile that was in the door. There's some foam, although that one's round. That tells me the cable went through that one. Um, this probably was on the door covering one of those holes. But these all are what people complain about noisy motors. It's because this stuff is missing. People put stuff back in. You gotta put that stuff back on. Especially, I know if I'm going to get a remanufactured motor, it's going to be probably noisy. Who knows? But put some foam on it. The plastic on the door is going to keep everything quiet. Um, and a lot of people complaining that these bolts aren't tapped when they get the new one. Well, you're supposed to use rivets, that's why. They don't. There's a lot of pressure in and out, moving back and forth. Nuts and bolts are going to loosen up. That's why they use rivets in the factory. Uh, I guess you could do bolts with Loctite nowadays. 
I think in the olden days, Loctite was a myth or didn't exist. <laughs> nah, they must have had something. Although I've never seen it. I don't know. Until uh, later on in the industry. So I may have to say, like I said, like I said, get a uh, left front motor and put it on here to take these rivets out. So we'll see.